Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's a sci-fi comedy that came out on June 8th, 2001, which sad to say was criminally underrated. It got divided by critics and audience alike, but has developed a cult following over the years. And I'm talking about the movie Evolution, which is a story about two college professors right here, both played by David Duchovny and Orlando Jones. Yeah, one works. One is actually a former scientist who works for the military, but has uh, got fired and wants to becoming a college professor. The other one is a geology professor. He's also his best friend. But he also works as a coach for a girls' volleyball team. Another one is a trainee to become a fighter fighter who also works at a country club and the other one is a sexy but clumsy and smart scientist that works for the government. They team up just to stop an alien organism that suddenly evolves from a meteor that just hits straight to earth which actually has a lot of creatures uh, evolving and of course the oxygen suddenly hits them and they're slowly dying so they discover an alien invasion that's happening now I thought it was a fun entertaining hilarious comedy when it came out plus it was quite different but the problem was though was that the audience, at, or at this rate, the critics themselves, had dismissed it as being a Ghostbusters and Men in Black clone. Which, that was the problem, considering the fact that Ira Reitman, who directed Ghostbusters, decided to do a different movie that was in the vein of Ghostbusters. Because originally, this was written as a serious horror film that I would have imagined that was written by Don Jacoby who did a lot of stuff um, along with writers David Diamond and David Wiseman both of which have went on to write um, The Family Man and then later went on to do films like Old Dogs and Ren and Rome come to mind so suddenly, Ira Ryman loves the script and decided to develop as a sci-fi horror comedy just to make it work. So you get a lot of humor into it and everything. Plus you get the, the smiley face that has like free eyes. So it kind of develops that. And you got a great cast right here. I mean, working together. And not only that, but you also got a TV series that followed uh, months after this movie came out called Alienators Evolution Continues, which aired on Fox Kids. Um, it was a short-lived series, sadly. But I guess in a way, they're trying to develop um, a marketing for this movie, so it was going to become a franchise someday, somehow. And they were going to actually get a lot of toys and merchandising for the movie. Just like the success of Ghostbusters when it came out. Now, I love Ghostbusters, and Ghostbusters is one of my favorite movies of all time. You know, with Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, Ernie Hudson, Annie Potts, with Sigourney Weaver and Rick Moranis. I mean, it, especially when you have one of my favorite actors of all time, so it's always fun, you know, having the all the comedians that you know and love, you know, busting some ghost. So here they're just busting some some alien creatures that you got, but mostly ordinary creatures that you see, like you see the blue monkey, you see tons of giant bugs spreading around, you see um, a dog-like creature that has that cutie um, sad face and 
and all of that that went into it. Plus, you even saw a giant flying bird going around. I mean, you get everything. I mean, that's what they're going for. I mean, and the fact that you get a, a giant, um, those giant blobs uh, that's known as evolution. So it evolves, uh, they split apart, they evolve. It spreads around and goodness knows. <laughs> uh, anyway, plus you got uh, some cameos and some other actors in this movie involved. I mean, you got Sarah Silverman in the movie. You got uh, Ted Levine, you know, from Signs of the Lambs, and as well as Joyride, uh, Nowhere to Run, and all these other films he's been in. You got Ty Burrell, who later went on to do the TV series uh, Modern Family. One of his earlier roles. Uh, you got um, Michael Wade Bauer from Salute Your Shorts, best known for playing Donkey Lips. Uh, Ethan Sapli from Remember the Titans. Yes. And My Name is Earl later on. He's in it. And also John Cho from uh, American Pie and. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle and all the other movies that follow. Yeah, so you got something right here. So I thought it was a different movie. So they, they were going for a different comedy that I Ryman was trying to do. And I just thought, you know, I would give this movie a chance. And I saw this movie uh, when we rented this on home video. I didn't get a chance to see it in theaters. I wish I had. And it's just sad that this movie bombed at the box office, mostly because of two words, Pearl Harbor. That awful Michael Bay movie that's an insult to our intelligence. It's not historically accurate as it seems. The fact that you get a, a fucking douchebag is played by Ben Affleck, um, who teams up with his friend, who's played by Josh Hartnett. And falling in love with the same woman played by Kate Beckinsale while they're going after the Japanese you know, during the attack of Pearl Harbor. And get the entire cast, including all the navies out there. You basically have one navy actually saying, I can't swim. And all this other insulting bullshit that they put into it. And plus, it's over long, three hours long, full of boredom. It wasn't pleasant for me to watch. Oh, and by the way, that movie also features Dan Aykroyd in the movie, who also appeared in a cameo in this movie. But he plays Governor Ben of Arizona. So there you go. <laughs> well, t trust me on this one. I'd rather watch Dan Aykroyd in this movie than in Pearl Harbor, which I think he's the only good thing about the movie, sadly, along with uh, John Boyd. <laughs> That's sure saying a lot, isn't it? So this, so that's the reason why this movie bombed. And of course, Shrek came out that year. Uh, that was a big hit for DreamWorks. Same studio that released this movie, uh, along with Columbia Pictures, uh, for international releases. I think this film could have been a bigger hit for the summer. That would have saved its profit here. But it only made like 98.4 million dollars uh, worldwide, but but that doesn't cost much for the North America release. So that was like half of the profit that they went for. Still wasn't a hit, so it's a shame. Well anyway, <laughs> enough for my ranting. Let's get to this movie. It stars David the Covney from The X-Files, best known for playing Fox Mulder. Agent Fox Motor, and he was also in movies like Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, that was his screen debut, California with a K, and also he was in Beethoven, which Ivan Reitman produced. Orlando Jones uh, from Mad TV, he was also in the movie The Replacements with Keanu Reeves, Gene Hackman, and uh, Jack Warden. Good movie. Very funny comedy. 
Uh, Sean William Scott from American Pie, best known for playing Steve Stifler. And went on to do films like Do Where's My Car, Road Trip, uh, Bulletproof Monk, and all his other, The Rundown, and all his other comedies he's been in. Yeah. Julianne Moore from movies like Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Yeah, she was in that. She was also in films like Benny and June, uh, Bookie Nights, uh, Magnolia, even... Uh, the Lost World Jurassic Park, and even uh, Hannibal. Yeah, replacing uh, Joy Foster as Clarice Starling. <laughs> yeah, Ted Levine, also from another uh, Hannibal Lecter film called The Signs of the Lambs, as I mentioned. And went on to do other stuff, too, that follows, including uh, Joyride, the same year. Uh, Ty Burrell, who later went on to do Modern Family, uh, Ethan Suplee from Remember the Titans, and My Name is Earl, Michael Ray Bauer from Salute to Shorts, best known for playing by Donkey Lips, and went on to do other stuff that follows, like movies like The Willies, and do, does some TV appearances and all that. Yeah, awesome guy. Uh, Pat Cobain, uh, Dan Aykroyd, best known for, for playing Ray Winston in Ghostbusters, and all his other movies he's been in, like The Booze Blooders, and uh, 1941, and all these other comedies he's been in, as you can expect. Silver Silverman, of course, went on to bigger, better fames too. That follows. I mean, in her career, she also went on to do uh, Wreck of Ralph. I mean, she's also a comedian, as we know. Uh, also, Cal Gas. Uh, they also worked together with uh, Jack Black you know, for Tendacious D, the band. And but he also has done some comedies as well. Um, Richard Mole from Night Courts. Uh, Tom Davis, uh, Jerry Flynn, and John Cho from American Pie went on to do uh, Harold and Kumar films. Yeah, it's written by John, Don Jacoby along with David Wiseman and David Diamond with the help of Ivor Reitman and it's directed by Ivor Reitman who did Stripes, Ghostbusters, Meatballs, have produced uh, other films too, like Beethoven, and he also had did films like Twins, uh, Junior, and Kindergarten Cop. The movie begins set in Glen Canyon, Arizona. We meet a trainee firefighter named Wayne Gray, who's played by Sean William Scott, which is basically practicing by throwing in a dummy inside a shack and just, you know, just practicing to become a firefighter. You know, set the shack on fire. He goes inside and and saves the dummy and prepare doing all these preparations. That is until a huge meteor is suddenly struck and hits um, at the bottom of the ground where his car was at and it actually flied all the way up in the air and that's where we get to see a giant hole underneath but meanwhile we meet a college professor named Ira Kane who's played by David Duchovny who works with his colleague and best friend who's a geology professor named Harry Block who was played by Orlando Jones so they're there to investigate a sample of a strange blue liquid that's inside a meteor. And they begin to harbor it by actually putting it inside the jar and to try to, to use the sample to see what's included inside the blue liquid. And that's where we get to see some organisms that's being spread inside the spectroscopy once he looks inside and you see all 
all them migrating and, and spreading around as he experienced. And he begins to begin to tell Harry about how it's happening. And part of the uh, the glass that's that has the sample inside is had just cracked. So it's it's spreading around, happening. So then um, they discover that um, evolution is starting to appear. So that means that all the creatures are going to arrive inside. So that's when um, Ira decided to bring in his college students, which also includes uh, two students uh, named Deck and Danny. That's played by Aoife Supley and Michael Ray Bauer. So they wanted to discover what's inside the hole, and that's where we get to see all these uh, all these flatworms that's spreading around. And that's when they took one of them and put it inside a jar, only to discover that one flatworm is dying because of the oxygen that they can't breathe in. So it converts uh, fungi, and suddenly the the flatworms are being spreaded into two. So they're starting to evolve within the cells and the organisms that they're going for. Um, but it only gets worse. But that is it, because that's when we started to see more creatures uh, evolving and are about to arrive and on an attack that's spreading. But meanwhile the site is being sealed off by the army that's being run by General Russell Whoopin, who's played by Ted Levine. He was an asshole. Yeah, he really is. And that's where we meet um, the government uh, worker and assistant, who's very clumsy, named Dr. Allison Reed. And she's very sexy too and attractive. Who's played by Julianne Moore. <laughs> so. They set off a court just to, just to have the right to, to be part of the research of the, their discovery, just when Ira and, and Harry had came onto the site and they visit there to, to collect those samples and try to find out what's happening. But we then learned that Ira, who once worked for the military as a scientist, was actually accused of creating an anthrax vaccine that actually uh, involves uh, ter terrible side effects that would affect everybody. Uh, they basically dubbed it known as the cane madness. After Wayne Grade had failed his training as being, becoming a, a firefighter, yeah, especially when he was trying to get up, practice going up on top of the ladder, yeah, he was asleep and actually hit his nuts. Uh, on the hose. He's basically just spending time working at, an, at a country club um, along with his uh, assistant partner and working for the country club owner who's an asshole. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, there's assholes in this movie if you think about it. I mean, kind of like in Ghostbusters when you have an asshole named Walter Peck. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right, because he has no dick. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I know, I know. This gets a comparison here, but but this is different. But we begin to know what happened to him next, too, because uh, after that, he got attacked by an alien creature, which is basically um, sort of a, a bit of a, uh, a crocodile type of creature that attacked him. And it actually killed him too, just when he was ready to have a date with a woman uh, while they were just having a party. And of course, this was like, I believe, like a couple of days after um, Wayne actually discovered that there was a lot of dead flatworms spreading around and discovered a, a creature that was basically like a turtle like creature that's inside the tank, the water tank. And he's about to pour some poison in there. Yeah. Well, anyway, he discovered the, that creature alone that attacked the, and killed the, the country club owner. 
and decided to take it to to the lab um, at college just to show um, Ira and Wayne that he actually found one of those and then they began to discover that there would be more spreading around including that one uh, dog-like uh, creature which is actually featured right here uh, in the back of the DVD yeah, it's right here uh, they're actually about to um, investigate and go after him too now of course before all this had happened too uh, there was also a scene in the movie where where Ira and Harry went inside um, the site and they begin to discover something big and and ginormous that this turns out I mean you begin to see like giant bugs they're so big I mean you even get to see a, a centipede that's so colorful and then you see all, all the the way um, the site looks uh, you see a lot of the one of those uh, that look like cauliflowers but but they're more um, like bacteria types of, of fungi and stuff that they had and you begin to see like um, <laughs> one creature that actually has uh, a huge uh, cranium that looks like an ass yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I know they they went for that joke too where yes uh, you did see an Ira actually mooned uh, <laughs> Russell Whitman well anyway um, but yeah this is one of my favorite moments in the movie where <laughs> once they were inside uh, they yeah, they, they put on their suits, you know, trying to collect the, one of the samples that's inside. But then all of a sudden, um, a mosquito, a giant mosquito, well, not that giant, it was like a, it's like a almost a uh, little big uh, mosquito, a dragonfly type, that went inside uh, Harry's suit. Yeah, he's very smart, he actually went, he just rips it up and went inside. And that's where you get to see the, the mosquito flying around uh, Harry's face. He was all shocked. And then all of a sudden it just went inside his butt. His ass. And now <laughs> now they took him inside the, the hospital and they're just ready to put... <laughs> this is one of the funniest scenes. I mean, the, the mosquito was going straight inside uh, his body. So it's moving around. They're trying to stop it. And... And he's just telling them uh, to hey put some lubricant. And he says, "We don't have time for lubricant." And he says, "Oh, there's always time for lubricant." <laughs> so they're yeah, so they're about to cut off his uh, leg, or and it was actually started headed towards his crouch or his testicles. And he just said, "Cut the leg, cut the leg." And then all of a sudden, it just went straight to his ass. And that's when they they stop it. They they, they yeah they use those uh, clippers and they put it inside his ass just to grab the the mosquito out of there. And that's when the mosquito was dying. <laughs> oh, that was a very funny scene. I just I just can't help but laugh at that scene. <laughs> okay. Um. Now let's just go back to where they found the, the dog-like creature, which was uh, inside uh, the woman's home. You know, they're just having a, a guest meeting and everything. And then suddenly you see the creature, you know, he has a sad looking face. And, and, and then once it opens its mouth, you see like that tiny creature inside just grabbing the, the woman's uh, fingers. And then it just went inside, and then, then the creature dies uh, slowly, yeah, because it's, because they can't breathe the oxygen. So all three of them, yeah, Wayne, Ira, and Harry just went inside to investigate what happened, and just they see a lot of flatworms spreading. Then they had to go all the way to the desert, and that's where you see all these uh, bird creatures flying, which are all slowly dying. Except for one, that was uh, that was a mutter, but then that one died, and 
and that's when it revealed uh, a giant loogie of a baby and that's the only one that was alive and it started to fly around going straight into the shopping mall called Tumbleweeds Pavilion and that creature went inside the, the department store called Tumbleweeds and started going after all the people around yeah, they're running away I, I know there was a deleted scene in the movie where there was more to that shot but I wish there would have been more but the creature went straight to the uh, the shoplifter yeah, a, a girl just basically just putting on a lot of clothes in the fitting room and and started uh, stealing all the clothes that she's wearing and then the creature just grabbed her flying around so then Ira, Harry, and Wayne's plan was to grab some shotguns uh, from a local sporting goods store just to stop them while <laughs> you know Wayne was just using as bait you know just calling out some uh, some bird calls and all that also singing the, the song you are so beautiful uh, on uh, on the mic so then when they finally arrived I mean that's when <laughs> That's when they're preparing to shoot the creature. Yeah, Iris shot him first. While um, Harry was Harry was about to save the girl, and then uh, <laughs> Wayne just came in as bait. And then, yes, he, even the girl told uh, Harry that I'll never shoplift again. And he just says, "Good." <laughs> so then. Uh, <laughs> So then, when the, the creature had woken up, uh, they both, all three of them, just shot him down completely, and there you go. <laughs> While they went on to sing the song, uh, play that funky music by Wild Cherry. Yeah, that was a great, that was a good song, though, that they put in. It really works. So they just continue to uh, go after all these creatures that's spreading around. I mean, there's even the, the blue monkeys. Uh, primate creatures going around hitting um, all the cameras that's, um, that they show and that's where we have governor of Arizona who's played by Dan Aykroyd to arrive to to have uh, the military and everyone else trying to stop those creatures but of course the military was about to kick uh, Ira and Harry out of there and, and so was uh, Chris Alice had just quits we're working with um, with Whitman so so now they had a form of plan to actually stop those creatures and that's where we get the the biggest surprise of them all and yeah I'm gonna spoil the surprise uh, excuse me for a minute Sorry. The biggest surprise, as they found out, uh, coming from Deck and Danny, is was that the only solution to stop those creatures from evolving and trying to help uh, save the world from from extinction. So that means human extinction as well. Was this Head and Shoulders Dandruff Shampoo? <laughs> I know, it, it's silly for a product placement to throw in, but you know what? I've seen a lot of movies where they, they started to use product placements and they don't care. And that's why people were complaining about when they saw this. But, <laughs> but you know what? I think that was a good idea anyway, because why not? I mean, I think shampoo would definitely help uh, stop a, an alien invasion that's happening, or any other kind. So mostly because it has uh, cetalium sulfide so that way it can stop them completely so well, there you go but I thought the comedy was hilarious I really enjoyed it it's such a shame it wasn't a big hit and it should have been they could have had a franchise as follow I mean I think the animated series could have lasted more than one season I mean, we could have more to it. And I think it was great to see such a great cast that they chose. And 
Uh, David the Company did a great job playing Ira. I mean, he has a bit of Fox Mulder in him at times, but then almost a little bit of Peter Bankman in there. Alano Jones uh, was hilarious too. I mean, playing Harry Block. I mean, basically see him as a geology professor, but but you basically see a lot of uh, jokes that <laughs> you know, he talks about, and and the fact that the chemistry between him and and Ira was just just hilarious. I mean, they they just work together as a team. So they're, they're like buddy and buddy too. And of course, Sean William Scott um, playing a goofball, but he's hilarious too. I mean, I always love all the the jokes that he comes up with too. Yeah, involving the creatures and what he found and all this. And of course, the beautiful uh, Julianne Moore you know, playing the a scientist and you know which apparently developed a relationship because um, so it's almost like yeah you know, again with those comparisons of Ghostbusters Peter Bankman and, and his uh, girlfriend yeah Dana Barrett yeah <laughs> um the special effects um, which were actually done by both uh, Pacific Data Images and uh, Sony Pictures Image Works uh, for the most part were pretty impressive for its time. I mean, considering that this was the early stage of CGI as we know it, um, I love the way they created the creatures of, of any kind, like the bugs and the and the other uh, uh, ordinary creatures as we've seen. They also created the primate scenes that's done by, by Al Gillis and Tom Werfruff Jr. Yeah, they created those. I mean, so there's there's a mix of practical effects in the movie that they provide. So I thought that was well done. Uh, it does get silly at times, and that's fine. I mean, it's supposed to be. But in the end, um, I thought it worked. Um, it wasn't meant to be like Ghostbusters nor uh, Men in Black. I just think it was just a whole different movie that's a sci-fi comedy that Ivan Ryman wanted to do for a long time after the success of Ghostbusters. And I know his sequel, Ghostbusters 2, was, which was also underrated. Yeah, but it did develop to make its profit when it came out. So it did, so it did pretty well. And he went on to do other stuff, so it's always good to do something different for a change. And, and I love the cast. I mean, they were all good, uh, including the the two teenagers, uh, Dex and Danny, you know, Ethan Suplee, Michael Ray Bauer. I think they were just great together, especially when they had those uh, blonde highlights. <laughs> I mean, if this series had continued back then, I would have loved to see more of these two guys. It would have been cool. They would work together as a team, and they did work together as a team in in the last half of the movie, and I loved that. But I wish there were more to it. So, <laughs> um, but you know, I think people should give this movie a chance. I mean, it's a fun film. I think it's better than than one might suspect. And. I hope they put this on Blu-ray someday. I mean, it would be nice to see an HD transfer for this, with all the extras included as a DVD. Um, yeah, the special features just has some deleted scenes, but I kind of wish there were, there were that other deleted scene that they could have been included from the trailer, where they just show Julia Moore shooting a gun, and that's where David McCovney says, that's hot. That's one of those scenes. And they probably would have had some more to it. Um, it does have a soundtrack for the movie too. And I did enjoy the um, the animated series um, that aired on Fox Kids. Uh, and I kind of wish it lasted more than one season, but still. Where they basically have um, the characters, but they also hired uh, another female named uh, Lucy Mai. Uh, who was actually a, a blue beret, but uh, Allison Reed just basically works uh, all alone as just a scientist. So sort of like uh, 
I get assistant to, to these guys. And also you got a creature named Gassy. <laughs> so that was supposed to be that creature that you saw from that the smiley face logo. So there you go. Well anyway. Uh, I think it's enjoyable, hilarious, um, outrageously, if you think about it. Uh, so I, so once again, you know, give this movie a chance. Uh, you'll definitely enjoy it. Try to find a, a rare copy on DVD if, if you must. Because hopefully someday they might put this on Blu-ray so they'll give uh, everyone a chance to watch it. And you can also watch it online too. Like I think they have it on... I don't know if it's on Netflix, but I think it's also on other uh, digital sites out there, if you can. But, but anyway, <laughs> check it out. Um, you'll have a fun time. And if you don't like it, then that's fine. You know, to each their own. So anyway, I give Revolution four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.